Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be learning about the 39th Guards Motor Rifle Division, a very famous division that's steeped in history. Before becoming a motorized unit in 1957, it was a 39th Guards Rifle Division that fought in the Battle of Stalingrad, where they were distinguished themselves in the defense of the Red October Steelworks, one of the last positions on the west side of Stalingrad. And many uh, divisions had to be deployed from the Wehrmacht to try to liberate that section of the city, leading to the flanks being exposed and later down the road, leading to the encirclement of Stalingrad. After the Battle of Stalingrad, they'd be retrofitted extensively, and then 44, they'd be in combat operations in Ukraine, to, and they would end up liberating Odessa. And then in 45, they'd be redeployed to fight in Berlin, where they engaged the Nordland Division um, and Groisch Deutschland, and they wiped them out, the last of the remnants of those units, and they fought the 17th SS, and they wiped them out as well and leading to the liberation of Berlin and the end of the war. After the war, the unit would be assigned to the 8th Guards Army and would remain in Germany from 1949, being motorized in 57 and being deployed near the folded gap for the remainder of the Cold War, being in their location of headquarters shifting place to place in the general vicinity. Battle, they had five motorized rifle reg regiments being equipped with T-80s, BMP-1s and 2s, and uh, various recon units also. The 201st Independent Helicopter Squadron was in the vicinity, which is reflected in the game. Furthermore, the 23rd Independent Tank Battalion was in it, equipped with T-80s, BMP-2s, and 1s. Also had the 30, uh, 489th Independent Anti-Tank Artillery Battalion, also the 11th Independent Guards Reconnaissance Battalion, and also 915 Anti-Aircraft Missile Regiments. Uh, so one of the most highly equipped units on the German front for the USSR, which we can see clearly as it reflected in the game. It's highly equipped, you know, BMP-1s in the game, BMP-2s and 3s, good variety of tanks. Uh, being equipped with T-64s, I'm not aware if that was actually the case in real life. I couldn't find any data or any order of battle from the Cold War that indicated they had T-64s. Obviously, they definitely had T-80s in, a, in abundance in the division. Moreover, there was many aircraft wings all throughout Eastern Europe, especially in the vicinity of this division with the Folder Gap. So there's plenty of aircraft which is reflected definitely in the division as well, being it has a lot of air power, a lot of air strength. And let's get into the, the pros and the cons of the division comp. So what do you get overall of the motorized division? Well, as you know, you would think, the infantry tab is just filled with BMPs for your choice. BMP1s, 2s, and 3s with tons of monostrophy. You don't have any super elite infantry or super elite tanks, but you just have a tons of infantry and tons of decent strong tanks. It's a highly equipped motorized division in real life, so it reflects that extensively in the game. You also have a nice helicopter detachment in real life, so you get this helicopter detachment in, in the game. With the, all these M24s, with different versions and varieties and different combat sets. Also, you also get the MI8s if you really look for a little bit cheaper alternative. Airwise, a strong air wing. So they've got M, you know, MiGs, 23s, and SC24s. Artillery-wise, strong as well, and a really good AA tab. As in real life, it does have an AA detachment with plenty of the latest equipment. So that is great. And overall, it's a really good motorized division. It doesn't have the cream of the crop in any category, but it just has good overall capability in, in every category. For the Logi tab, you get three options of CVs here. You get the MI9. I would not use helicopter CVs. Not recommended in my opinion. You get the BTRs. This thing is actually what I would go, go with. Just a light vehicle. can take some artillery shots. Fast and maneuverable and still pretty cheap. You get the BMP-1, but again, it comes with a lot more defenses. But again, you just don't want this in, in combat at all anyway. Infantry-wise, Awesome. You got Motostroke with great choices. Motostroke can come with BMP ones, two, and threes, whichever your preference is. There's pros and cons either. I prefer the uh, the MP, sorry, the BMP threes. They're so good. They also come with MTLBs. Superior though, you have two options. Superior, you get the one with the satchel. Satchel is not recommended, uh, just because they can never get in real range. But the the superior with the uh, incendiary rocket absolutely destroys people. Again, you have two options: you can become a BTRS 60 or just a normal transport. You also get your Motostroke with some uh, ATGMs, uh, which come with BMP-1s or MTLBs. It's a good choice here. Two options of Commander as well, uh, if you feel like that's something you want. You also get some vehicles here, but I, again, I just I don't think these are very cost efficient, so I wouldn't bring these as well. Already wise, you get a really good variety here. First of all, you get this beautiful 152 mil. You also get 122 mil, and then you also get two units of rockets, feeling whatever you want, 220 or just 122. They're both good. These are pretty good for counter battery, I think, in general. And these are pretty good for shooting down AA and stuff. Obviously, bigger caliber just does more damage more effectively and more quick. Tank-wise, though, you don't have too much variety in tank. It is a motorized 
division, not a tank division. Get T80 spams, but you also get one card of T64s if you're looking for that. With the T80Vs if you're looking for a command tank as well. But these are pretty expensive. Also, you get the MTLBs if you're looking for some ATGM vehicles to help support your line. Recon wise, you get these great German infantry. These are actually really strong. Uh, they don't have really good strength, and generally have an RPG, which is always nice. You also get some Rosetta if you're feeling like a little bit bigger squad. Actually, same size squad but without the RPG. So, and then if you want uh, another Russian infantry, but even smaller, but does come with a, a anti-tank rocket if you're looking at that. You also get these BDRMs. These things are not very good at all. They get detected pretty quickly and go down. BMP ones can forward deploy, so utilize that. Same with your helicopters. These helicopters though have zero ability to. Uh, do anything they have no weapons they're just pure recon AA wise you have awesome AA tab first of all I get OSHAs they are radar based so watch out for the seed but again these things are really great they'll shoot down everything if you've got them up to two vet you get freaking 68% accuracy you're pretty much shooting down anything that looks over you those get MTLBs if you're looking for a little bit cheaper alternative and then a BRDM Stella one if you're looking for even cheaper alternative. you should bring these IGLAs as well these things are really great for AA I highly recommend them. You get a whole bunch of them too. Even if you have vet them once, you can still get eight of them, and they're pretty much always going to hit. So that's really great. Also, the Brista, a really effective unit. Again, watch out. It is radar, so it will get taken out by seed. You really got to be careful of that. These are not radar, so something alternative. OSHAs are. And then these are also pretty good, but again, I don't recommend these at the moment. Just because they're radar, they could kill a seed, and then they have three shots, and the rate of fire is not particularly the best. So, just my opinion. You can see the difference. OSHA has a rate of fire of 13, while these key UBs have a rate of fire of 9. And not much uh, better accuracy either. So, not really recommended. Helicopter-wise, you, as we said in the order of battle, they have a helicopter unit in the vicinity. So, they get a great variety of uh, different helicopters here. First, got to get the M24s. These things mow down enemy any vehicles on the ground, any infantry on the ground. Just get just, just destroyed. You also get a cheaper alternative here. With the MI-24s AA, uh, come with some infrared missiles to take like, on enemy helicopters and also enemy fighters. So that's a great thing too to keep mix them in there. I'll, I mean, you just get a whole bunch. You also get AT, so it says AT next to them, AA, and then P just to help support. You see that they get, there's a little descriptor if you really need to. And then air-wise, awesome as well. First of all, get tons of clusters, get 20, make 23 MLAs. Uh, HC bombers, napalm bombers, everything you could really feel like. These aircraft are pretty slow, so be wary of them. They're uh, they're pretty strong and take a lot of hits, but again, they die really quickly. These aircraft are where it's at. They can get in and out really quickly. Um, you gotta watch out though with your MiG 23s. F 15s will just annihilate you, but if you have enough of them, you can definitely win. Let's get the MiG 23 here. But again, I I recommend in general that you go with the MiG uh, 23s. These things are pretty good, and then you obviously just get your all the other aircraft. Uh, overall, this deck is a really strong deck, I think, in general. It's got an awesome infantry tab. It's got a good air tab. It's got enough tanks to hold its ground. It's got a great AA tab. There's really no real bad weaknesses in this deck, and I think it's definitely playable and really fun enjoyment. So I hope you guys will uh, tell me how you guys think about it, because I'd be really curious. And let me know what you guys think about the video in general. I'll be curious to see what you guys think about. Should I put more history in it, um, or put more content about the pros and the cons of the deck? I'd be really curious. Just let me know.